the fans. It's got to be the fans. I mean, I think we got the best fans in the world. I mean, our fans live and die by basketball down here, so it's very good. Our fans is the most important thing. So this, I'm just going to look back remember all the tragedies and all the things that happened, how we just pulled together and made us stronger and how we just came through and won the national championship. Uh, I think it's just experience. I think uh, last year when we got that taste of how the tournament felt and how deep we went, and it just left a bad taste in our mouth. And, uh, we knew that we knew what it took to get there, and uh, we think we had the pieces to go farther, and we all put it together. I was I was really nervous, you know. Uh, you know, doubt got in my head, you know. You know, from the beginning, I never doubted that we would win, but, you know, when I saw the score and, and there was only two minutes left, I definitely doubted that we could win. But, I mean, I had to get the guys together and had to show them that I had faith and that we all had faith and that we could do it. I, I remember somebody having a hand in his face, you know. I thought it was going to get blocked, but uh, he put enough arch on it, and uh, it was in the air for a long time. It kind of looked like it curved, curved around and then just dropped in. It was a beautiful shot. One thing I'm gonna remember, we had five seniors that, man, love KU more than anything in the world, man. Every time we, we me and Darnell talk about it every night, we sit there, cry together, just like, man, it's all over, man. Like, I didn't sit with my best friend and talked about it. It's just something you, you don't want to happen, but I can seriously walk away knowing that we're the national champions, but that makes it a lot better. But it's been the greatest years of my life, man. I'll never forget this place. I don't care what I do in life. This has been the best part, chapter of my life so far. Just to win a national championship and be remembered as like probably arguably the best team ever in Kansas so far, that's just special, man. Like I can come back 10, 20 years from now with my kids and just be like, that's something that we, that me and my brothers accomplished together. And that's just a feeling that will last a lifetime. Just experiencing all the tradition, running out the tunnel, you hear all of the traditions about great guys coming through Kansas, and they never won a national championship, and we did, and and we didn't have no Paul Pierce, Scott Scott Paul, and all those great guys. Coach D, he, he used to give me a hard time every game because I can have 15 points, nine rebounds. And like, oh, you tricked it up. You could have had a double double. And next game, I can have eight points, nine rebounds. And then, oh, you tricked it up. You could have had two more points. You could have had a double double and something like that. And, and when I finally got, he, he eased up off me a little bit. He's like, Congratulations. But he's like, You're still a trick. And he's like, As long as you can do that consistently, we'll win every game. So I just try to take it to heart. Every time he stayed on me, I try to just try to impress him when I'm out there on the court. I mean, it felt, it felt great, you know, just, uh, just, just knowing that, you know, have a little more responsibilities, you know, in front of the younger guys and stuff, and, you know, try to give that senior leadership to the team and stuff, and, uh, you know, knowing that it's my last year, you know, and that every game was, you know, accounted for and stuff, and especially when it got closer to the end, it was just like, well, you know, anything can be a last deal, and it was kind of a cool feeling, and like, I guess, feeling not want to give up and just, you know, want to keep playing and keep pushing and stuff, and just, uh, you know, try and try your best to you know do as well as you could possibly can. I definitely, you know, it's a great feeling. I mean, we have probably one of the best fans I've ever been around. I mean, it's just unbelievable. You know, every game sold out. You know, sixteen, three hundred people, people, and uh, it's just so much fun. And they have so much appreciation for what we do. And obviously, we have huge appreciation for what they do for us. I mean, if it wouldn't have been for them. I don't think, you know, we would have been as successful as we are. I mean, it's just unbelievable support from them. And, you know, have the opportunity to run through the, you know, through the tunnel and everybody's, you know, staying up and clapping and cheering for you. It's just, you know, such a great feeling and uh, it's just unforgettable.
Definitely been great. I mean, it's what's one thing that I would definitely, you know, when I was speaking college, looking into, like you said, you know, not be able to have, you know, immediate family here and trying to make some new family friends and, you know, team, the coaches, the players and stuff was definitely my number one family here, you know, just being able to be with somebody who, you know, cares for you, loves you and stuff like that. And, you know, if you have any problems, you can always go talk to somebody, you know, if that's your, you know, teammate, your coach or whatnot. And I think we have a pretty cool group, you know, of great guys and stuff. And we're all so close to each other. And, you know, we have, you know, kind of like, you know, love each other like brothers and stuff. And it's just very, it's been very helpful. And I, I thought it definitely, you know, took us kind of through some tough times throughout, you know, past couple of years and stuff. And it's just been pretty cool. He means the world to me. I mean, he's you know he's 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 been there for for me if I needed anything. You know, he's always guided me and stuff, and I have respect for him. You know, and I mean, he reminds me kind of a lot of my high school coach. Like I said earlier, I mean, he, you know, my high school coach, big admirer of Coach Self. I mean, he does a lot of things the way Coach Self is, and like even before I got to know Coach Self, you know, I knew that, you know, he would always kind of. I mean, follow him. I mean, I would come into the room. Well, that's when Coach Self was back at Illinois. I mean, I would come into his office and he have some news from Illinois reading up on Coach Self. He has a backpack of Illinois. He would go to Illinois, watch practices and stuff. And he was just a huge, huge, huge admirer of him. And I think me, you know, kind of starting to play basketball in the States under my high school coach, you know, the way that he did things and then have an opportunity to come and play for Kansas and, you know, knowing that there's a lot of similarities in coaching between him and Coach Self, and I thought that was just you know great, a great plus to it. You know, it was like I don't have to make a lot of adjustments. I, I know what things are, and I just you know I really like the way you know Coach Self does things. You know, and it's just been a pretty cool you know opportunity to you know to have this opportunity to be able to be coached by him. Danny, you know, he's <laughs> I don't think there's any. Better big man coach I think you can find in college basketball. I mean, he's probably as, as, as good as it gets, you know, and, and having that opportunity to have him on the staff is just unbelievable because he has so many different tricks and skills and stuff, and he knows what's, what's right for you, what's wrong for you, you know. He teaches you good habits, you know, tries to get rid of bad habits, and just all the things that, you know, he kind of says throughout practices and stuff like that, and, you know, tries to teach you and encourage you and stuff, which has been so great, and, I'm, you know, definitely when I was, you know, getting recruited here and stuff, and that was Danny's first year back, you know, from NBA and stuff, and I was kind of definitely looked into that, and, you know, I spent some time talking to Danny, and he really, I mean, I really enjoyed talking to him, and definitely was a pretty good factor of, you know, coming here and, you know, just, just have that opportunity to be coached by, you know, one of the great players who ever played the game. Well, it's a thin line, you know, he, He's he's your friend, and uh, you know he's he, he he's friendly, laughs and jokes around. But when it's time to go to business, and that's normally in practice and games, you know he's 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 up for business, and uh, he he keeps a fine line where guys know that it's it's time for business and time to work hard. Well, the best thing about it to me is the smile you put on the fans' face, and uh, I think that more than anything, you know, is you know. What I embody the most about suiting up and putting on a uniform, you know, that, that smile I put on that little kid's face, you know, when I signed his autograph or to, you know, that smile on the old lady's face when, you know, when she, she's rooting for me in the stands, I think that's the best feeling ever. You know, there's 10-8 left and they're shooting the free throw and there was, I called timeout, so there was really no reason for, 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 Cal to call a timeout. If you know, I'm sure he told the team, "Hey, we're up three. This is what we're going to do." But you know, who knows? But 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 uh, uh, makes a shot. Darnell takes it out, and Sharon did something really really smart. He he uh, and he did this on his own. This wasn't me telling him in the timeout. Big guy always takes it out. Those are two Sharon, and then Sharon waits for Darnell to clear. If he hadn't waited for Darnell to clear and Darnell's running down, now Darnell becomes a, a, an extra defender that gets in Sharon's way. He waited a second and a half for him to clear, because it was about 9.2 when he actually started advancing the ball. And, and he gets his shoulders past Derek, and, and, uh, and he gets in there, and he he's, he's gets his shoulders past him enough that Derek stays with him. And 
he's kind of he's kind of off balance. He almost loses the dribble, so it's not a handoff. It, the play was for it to be a handoff, and they would have switched the handoff, and Derek would have been much closer to Mario on a handoff. But instead, there was about a four foot pass, and on that four foot pass, it created enough space where Derek was probably two steps away from Mario. Mario fumbled it, so if Mario didn't have if there wasn't that four feet difference, he wouldn't have had time to bounce it to get to, to get balanced. And it was just one of those lucky things. It's one of those lucky things that, 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 you know, do you switch a handoff? You switch a handoff, but do you switch the pass? And in that four feet area, was it a handoff, was it a pass? And it created just enough hesitation that, that gave him space. And, and of course, he lined it up and he knocked it down. But it was a fabulous play by Sharon and, of course, an unbelievable shot by Mario. And, you know, He's made many of those in his three years here, and, and uh, you know it's certainly fitting for our most clutch shooter to get the ball in the last possession like that. I was in shock then. I'm still a little bit numb, but you know you see all the pictures of coaches hugging and all that stuff. I think I was just sitting on the bench, and. Uh, uh, sat down and guys come up and they start hugging and. I think our assistant coaches were even first to, to meet to meet the Memphis staff, and then I was right there. But it wasn't a wild separate celebration for me personally. It was for our players, uh, and so, but but you know just so you know Cal Cal and I have a great relationship, and and he knows I know that we were fortunate. I mean we played ten times. We're, it's going to go five and five. I mean both teams were equally matched, and 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 uh, so you know I understand that, and 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 uh, feel bad for, for anybody that would, that would not win that game based on the circumstances. But, but you know, it was, a great, it was a great moment for us. And our players, I, I, they're all out there celebrating. And if you watch the video, then they all turn and sprint to get back in line to shake hands. There never was, there, was a loss that, hey, this, this is still a game of sportsmanship and let's get over there and let's do what we have to do. And, and, and uh, it, it, it was cool. It was a great moment. And of course, you know, just going around and hugging those guys and, and knowing that, that this, is, this is a feeling and a moment that we'll never forget. And having all the families there, and, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was pretty remarkable. You know, I tell teams all the time, and I'm sure I've told this one, hey, you're soft, you know, you're selfish, you know, uh, uh, your thoughts are selfish, you know, you're not aggressive and all that stuff. And from this point forward, I'll be comparing every team to this team. Hey, if you were as tough as those guys and if you were as aggressive as those guys, and so I, I think what I'll remember is that that is, you know, the best group that I've been around to date. And hopefully we can find somebody to match. It'd be hard to surpass it. But, but, uh, but the biggest thing is, is, is how those guys let us coach them. I mean, they, they, they never... They never batted an eye. They, they may have in the locker room, and I know how players are in the locker room because I was one up, and they can rag on coaches and, and do this and do that. But when it came down to business, those guys never blinked as far as trying to carry out assignments and do what was best for the, for the team. And, and to see those things all come to fruition and have those guys now, be, now understand what it means to really be part of a team and what can be accomplished if, you know, the old cliche, if nobody cares, who gets the credit? I would say the best thing about being the basketball coach at the University of Kansas is, I'd say two things, is the passion and the amount of people that care. Until you're here, you really don't feel that. And that's one unbelievable thing, and the tradition and all that stuff. But to me, to be at a place where you know you can recruit players that can compete at this level uh, uh, makes, it, makes, it, makes it so special because I know that there is a chance that it can happen again.